Good day, friend of God. Welcome to prayer on Monday, the 11th of December. Let's take a deep breath and we'll begin with our opening responses. God's love has been poured into our hearts. We dwell in the Lord and God in us. Together, we dwell in the Lord and God in us. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon the divine name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. Together, make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Together, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Together, who was and is and is to come. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. Making up a bit from the weekend, we will read all of Amos chapter 6. Woe to the complacent. Woe to you who are complacent in Zion, and to you who feel secure on Mount Samaria, you notable men of the foremost nation to whom the people of Israel come. Go to Kalna and look at it. Go from there to great Hamath, and then go down to Gath and Philistia. Are they better off than you two kingdoms? Is their right hand larger than yours? You put off the evil day and bring near a reign of terror. You lie on beds and laid with ivory and lounge on your couches. You dine on choice lambs and fattened calves. You strum away on your harps like David and improvise on musical instruments. You drink wine by the bowl fill and use the finest lotions, but you do not grieve over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore you will be among the first to go into exile. Your feasting and lounging will end. The Sovereign Lord has sworn by himself, the Lord God Almighty declares, I abhor the pride of Jacob and detest his fortresses. I will deliver up the city and everything in it. If ten men are left in one house, they too will die. And if a relative who is to burn the bodies comes to carry them out of the house and asks anyone still hiding there, is anyone with you? And he says, no, then he will say, hush, we must not mention the name of the Lord. For the Lord has given the command. For the Lord has given the command, and he will smash the great house into pieces and the small house to bits. Do horses run on the rocky crags? Does one plow there with oxen? But you have turned justice into poison, and the fruit of righteousness into bitterness. You who rejoice in the conquest of Lodibar, and say, Did we not take Carnaim by our own strength? For the Lord God Almighty declares, I will stir up a nation against you, O house of Israel, that will oppress you all the way from Libo Hamath to the valley of the Arabah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I hope you notice that the spiritual problem here is negligence of God, forgetfulness of God, and a great complacency. I think the danger of complacency is real for all of us. We do need the Lord to help us to remain faithful and passionate in our Christian walk. Though I do commend you for your prayers and your worship of God. Lord, come and be our helper continually. We jump in the New Testament to the letter to Jude. As you know, it is very short. It's only one chapter containing 24 verses. This the main themes here are against false teachers and against apostasy, that is, backsliding to all of Jude for you today. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you, there are godless people who change the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. 
Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home, these he has left in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatever they do not understand and what things they do not understand by instinct. Like unreasoning animals, these are the very things that destroy them. Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error, and they have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These men are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way, and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault-finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But, dear friends, Remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault, and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now, and forevermore. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Jude, also known as Thaddeus, was a relative of our Lord and one of the twelve apostles. He was present at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. He went on to be missionary. We're not sure exactly where. Many attribute his ministry to the area which is now Armenia. And Armenia was the first nation to fully embrace Christianity. It was the first Christian nation on earth. His epistle is passionate and quite judgmental of the false teachers who were infiltrating the community of faith that he served. There are only hints about what the false teachers taught. Perhaps given the early age of this letter, that was Gnosticism. Gnosticism was a teaching, pseudo-Christian, that denied the incarnation of Christ as well as Christian ethics. Jude was quite strong in his condemnation of this false teaching that was leading people astray. As church, together, we need the prayers of the church that we will continue to follow and walk in the light of Christ. Lord, from all forms of false teaching, good Lord, deliver us.
Now let us all join our hearts as we pray for the church and the world. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of himself, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now, friends, the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen, amen. Have a blessed day today, Monday, as we begin a new week in God's amazing grace.